life is so wonderful. It's so absolutely wonderful. Hello, everyone. This is Shaman Dirk, and welcome to 30 Days Strong. And this is day 24 of 30 Days Strong. I'm sure you are now, at this time, from doing all of these days of learning shamanic tools that you don't regularly find in some book or in some library, you actually are getting like the juicy stuff to really support you. And, um, you know, and I've thrown in some things in there too, to just make it fun for you that, you know, you can access more of your powers and so forth as well. Uh, but I'm really just want to say, I'm really proud of each and every one of you for learning the symbols, um, learning how to access your powers, accessing into the spirit world. I can feel all of you you know, utilizing your power. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for showing up for yourselves. Thank you for showing up for your friends, family, and thank you for showing up for the world, right? Because when you are acknowledging yourself, you actually are acknowledging everyone else because the more you make yourself better and the more you create more love for yourself, the more you create more compassion for yourself and the more you create more generosity and kindness and gentleness for yourself, to then transmit that energy into the world and amplify that uh, into the world. Literally, uh, you become a walking tsunami of energy transference to the rest of the planet, to the trees, to the flowers, to the rocks, to stones, rivers, you name it, right? So the dream starts here, the dream goes out there, and it becomes this collective, um, you know, gathering. You know, but I, I also think that we recognize, you know, the process of spirituality is not about being holy. Now. It's not about being perfect. It's not about not ever making choices that are contradictory to yourself or contrary to yourself. You know, um, a lot of times people will say, if you're spiritual, you should be like this and you should be like that. You should do these things and you should never make this choice. And you should never make that choice. Look, I'm in, and as you know, I travel around the world and I, when I speak on all types of things from like abuse to mental issues to you name it. You know, but when I was growing up, I went through a lot of abuse, you know, and I got into drugs and alcohol, crystal meth, cocaine, you name it. And so it's not about the holier than thou, right? It's a we chose to come to earth to embrace the lessons of humanity, not of our individual selves. Everything that we've gone through that we judge or think is incorrect is actually the most amazing transformative thing for us and for the planet. The reason why is if I've never did coke, or if I never did crystal meth, if I never was an alcoholic, and I never was like constantly waking up and just looking for my next way to stuff in all the pain that I went through through my abuse and my child molestation, you know, my mom leaving when I was a kid, and all these things that you read about in, in the book that I put out worldwide, there is an understanding that this isn't about me. Like, this isn't me. Like, yesterday I was on a phone call, and Oh, yeah, someone was talking and saying, Dirk has this sword past. And I'm like, you know, you can acknowledge the sword past all you want, but all of that is your shamanic training to be who you are to be, right? You can't look at it in this, like, oh my God, I was this horrible person. It's, I'm glad I was an alcoholic. I'm glad that I did those drugs. I'm glad that I made those choices to be, you know, that punk skater kid who listened to Metallica and would punch holes in walls and get angry because I didn't know how to motion because of my machismo, you know, African father. I'm glad that I was those things, had that experience and had even him as a father because those things gave me training and the lessons I needed to be able to deal with adversities. Like when I was in Israel and the war broke out in the 90s, I stood still, I stayed with the people, I helped them to endure, I created programs for meditation, transformation and healing so that they can come out through that situation with love. I didn't run away and same in Turkey, I didn't run away, you know, because I had went through all of those adversities in my life so I have no problem standing in front of the charge, right? And so a lot of times you may ask yourself, why did I have to suffer so much? Why did my sister suffer? Why did my mom suffer? Why did my mom suffer? It's how you deal with your suffering and realize that your suffering is not in vain. Your suffering is for the opportunity to become the most powerful shaman you can be. 
Um, that means for you to be, and when I say shaman, you understand what I'm saying is someone who is about creating relationships. Because remember, shamanism is not it's not iboga, it's not morning glory. I know a lot of people like to to to, to pin the Western world likes to pin shamanism to plant medicine and, and coin it up as that. That's not what shamanism is. Shamanism is about having relationships, solid relationships that are grounded and unconditional love, acceptance, and, and discovery. And literally, you're having relationships with trees, with your ancestors, with yourself, food, with your friends, with your family, with the earth, and everything. And the stronger and more you show up without judgment and full acceptance and understanding, your relationship becomes even stronger and more grounded and rooted. And that's the key element of communism. It being rooted, right? Because you can see a lot of spiritual people out there talking about the downward dog, do this, do that, but they're not rooted. They're not rooted, right? And rooted people are not afraid of the darkness. Rooted people are afraid of the, of the tidal wave that comes their way because they're so rooted, they're like a tree that can't be moved. And whatever hits them just goes right through them because they can't be swayed. They're rooted people. And that's what I want for everyone to become on planet Earth is rooted people, not people who are so afraid of their shadow, afraid of the darkness, afraid of what goes bump in the night, afraid of something calling their name when they're walking down a hallway, afraid that someone is facing anger and emotions and they have to get you triggered upset because they're not rooted. Do you understand? So important, so important for us to be a rooted global tribe. That's how we learn from the trees. That's how we learn from the nature of everything that's happening in the world. The reason why we have so much calamity and discord with everything that is taking place now with coronavirus and all the other stages that I talk about in my book. Um, I don't list the stages in my book, just so you know, because I, that wasn't what the book was about, was list stages. It was about letting you know there is a blackout, it lasts for a while, and here are the steps and things you can do to actually move through it. However, the stages of the blackout are 12 stages, and we are just in the first one, which is known as the blackout. And there's other ones that are coming. And so, so you're not surprised or off, you know, off your balance it's about getting rooted. And when you're rooted, you can look and watch everything that the world, the people make in the world, the choices they make, the, the, the things they say. And, you, and you're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, right, right. Okay, yeah, sure, got it. And rooted, it makes it easier and more accessible for spirit, for ancestors, and for your tribe to be able to support you and find you because they're able to, because you're rooted and you're connected to a deeper collective. Because there's what I call the, I call it, you know, the flimsy mimsy collective, which are those who just like talk about spiritual things. But then as soon as when it comes to take action, like Martin Luther King said, like, you know, those who actually take action when they see something wrong versus those who talk about it and, and then sit back and watch and see who will take action. A rooted person takes action and uses their available resources necessary knowledge and wisdom or support or gathering or collective um, sharing to be able to help assist and lift five so that we can stand together not in a hierarchy not in greater than you mentality you know these spiritual people have fallen into such a, a calamity of of the be validated and seen as gurus and oh I'm the shaman and I'm a this and I'm a that instead of realizing none of that shit means anything. What matters most is how are we preparing each other with truth and honesty, authenticity, love, acceptance, and bringing knowledge to be create wisdom because you can have a knowledge, but wisdom comes when you actually know when to insert it into love so it's really important as we step um you know into what is our life what is our job what we call our life service what is our relationships what you know why 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 are we involving ourselves in these things you know why are we buying the things we have in our homes are we collecting things that collect dust because we don't really have any kind of 
shift it. It doesn't inspire. I go to people's homes and I look around and I think to myself, my goodness, um, you know, this is a uh, this is a lot of stuff around you. you. Need all these things like you don't even this shelf looks so dusty. You don't even do you even connect with any of this stuff here? And they're like, oh no, I bought that at this thing and I got it at this thing and I like you know consumerism is literally a soul drainer because consumerism allows you to think that you're vacuous and empty inside needs to be filled and that's what we learned from our from our childhood from our parents i mean was it necessary for my dad to go on being uh, have the, the house people go on a shopping spree and come and come up with all these christmas gifts under the tree just so that when people come over they can see the tree littered with all these gifts and go wow amazing wow he can see it at night look at all the stuff i bought from my kids yeah but look at all the starving and look at how many wells have not been built in Africa. Look at all of the people who could use extra support in getting the plastics out of the water. Look at all the different places where we need to create centers to build people's powers of awareness, emotional intelligence, energy, understanding, learning how to adapt, learning how to build agriculture um, in a way that supports humanity, learning how to understand botany, learning how to build your own garden, sustainable gardens, awareness of how to make uh, ocean water, to drinking water. These are the fundamentals of a rooted person. Fundamentals are things that allow you to thrive, right? And so what do parents do? They buy their kids all these gifts. And so their kids grow up with this idea that in order to be happy, I have to buy stuff, buy more stuff. And buy stuff and the more you have stuff you think you're safe you think you're you, you you're filled let me tell you i have a lot of friends who bought a lot of stuff with big big houses and lots of furniture and lots of paint arts and lots of cars and when that fire hit in malibu they lost it all okay all that stuff that you're buying you can stop buying it and use that money to educate yourself learn a new language learn how to do something that is actually keeps you rooted as an individual in this world that allows you to have resource, not resource from the sense I can buy something, but what we call human resource. Human resource means that you are valuable to tribe. You offer something that allows us to thrive. Now, I'm gonna explain to you what is showing up in the world today requires you to think out all the things that we have been putting our attention to as far as what people think is what people need, the needs are going to change. The need is going to be about resource. What do you offer that if any off scale of, of on our planet, which is already off the rip, even more than that, do you have survival skills? Do you have resources, rooted resources that can help people to because if you don't have rooted resources to help people to thrive, then what are what are you contributing to the tribe, right? I mean, Beyonce, what's she going to do? Sing me to sleep in my tribe, our tribe? Is she, you know, is is you know what what are they going to do? You know, is Madonna going to dance around for set and our tribe going to get out there and fish? Is she going to get out there and 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 start collecting water? And she's going to get out there and turning the soil so we can start getting good minerals and. Is she going to get out there and be able to know how to build structures? Is she going to get out there and be able to help people who are going through difficult emotions because of the experiences they see with earthquakes, all the things that are going to be happening on our planet? Is she going to be able to calm them, comfort them, and so forth? But even right now, when we're going through the coronavirus, looking at all celebrities that we that everyone goes up to and worships the golden calf for, I don't see any of them getting up there and going like, hey, real talk, real talk on Instagram right now. Let's go real talk. I see a lot of my friends who are doing that and I call them up and I like, you know what? I have mad props for you because when the going is going the way it is, you show up authentic outside of your need to be the superstar, the red carpet person, the person who's like on the magazines and not. You are actually showing up vulnerable and saying, hey, you guys, I'm in this stuff together. I'm no greater than you. What can I do with my resource? resource to create change on the planet in someone's life. There's people right now who've lost people, family members, um, people who can't even buy food, people who can't even you know, take care of just the basic necessities of what it means to be a human being, right? 
And so when I see people like who are stepping up, I'm like, props, props, because I, because those people are showing me their true colors. They're showing me that outside of your Golden Globes, your Emmy Awards, and your Academy Awards, and your sports, um, uh, you know, uh, accolades, and whatever it is that you've done that makes people go, whoa, right? And put people on pedestals, which that stuff's got to stop immediately. In the spiritual leaders, like knock it off, get off your pedestal, and let's see eye to eye. There's no, that's that. It's it's so annoying to watch influencers and and and, and people in the spiritual community look like they put themselves above the masses of people when they are people, you know, because at the end of the day, a tsunami comes, you know what? Your house isn't meaning anything. Your Bentley, your car means nothing. What you're trying to do right now is survive. And you're going to want your tribe around you who are rooted, who are like, hey, I got you. Come quickly. Now get in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be, let's, let's make through this. You know, this is real. This is real talk. This is real talk. So getting into that perspective allows us to understand what true spirituality is. Spirituality is in yoga. It's not juices. It's not the fact that you eat vegan or you eat this or you do that. Or it's not It's not the fact that you went to India. It's not the fact that you took ayahuasca or boga or a time with a shaman in the jungle. Woohoo! Yeah, yay for you. You know, yeah, let's write it down. You got it off the checklist. Okay? But the truth is, true spirituality, real spirituality is evolution. It is the ability to see what is necessary for you to shift within yourself so that you can evolve with the earth and assist the evolutionary adaptation of people on the earth to thrive and continue. That is spiritual. Not the fact that you did an upward dog, downward dog, okay? That's great. That's good. It's good for your back and it also helps you stretch your mind. It's, it's nice. If you're stretching your mind and you can't help your brother and sister, you're stretching your mind, but you keep buying things that you don't really need. You're stretching your mind, but you keep looking over at people and making them wrong instead of learning how to help them adapt, co-adapt, and be able to come to the fold of saying, I got resources, you got resources, what can we do to make a difference? Oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to put myself here because my Instagram post is on fleek. I pictures. I took them all through the year when I went on vacation. So every picture you see is just like flawless. And I'm like, you know, getting stuff and I'm doing down with dogs and drinking green smoothies upside down and while eating some kind of vegan cake. I don't care. At the end of the day, how are you showing up for family? How are you showing up for each other on the planet? Because what's coming our way? You know, you read the book that I wrote. And that's the reason why it was launched worldwide in every single country except for Japan, China, France, and Italy. I mean, even Russia bought the book because everyone knows that when I write a book, it's not because I'm trying to get money from something. It's because Spirit said, write the book and give them the tools that they need to remember who they are. Because remember, I share things with you, my loves, share things with you, not as your teacher, not as your guru, not as your shaman. But as your brother who loves you, sees you, and knows how powerful you are, and is saying, no, if I lay these things in front of you, remember, you're going to remember who you are, and you're going to remember why you are, and you're going to remember what to do, and why you chose to be on this planet at this most transformative time. So when I embrace that you had did drugs, embrace that you were molested, embrace that you had abuse as a child, embrace that someone broke your heart, embrace all of it because your training to do what you came here to do, training to endure what you're enduring right now on earth. So when you see things and you say, oh, this is so intense, so much, I don't know if I can make it, Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. You can make it because you've made it many other times. Reflect back, not for the sake of I was this and I should have did better. No, we don't go there, okay? I'm not a past person. You are a future person. So when I to talk to you, you say, look, if the past is to be looked upon, it's to reflect back on the things I overcame, the obstacles I climbed over. 
the successes I make so I can carry that energy to do now in this present moment. If you want to know something about me, you don't need to know about what I dated and what I did in the past. I'm a present future person. Ask me what I'm doing now. You see, because people are so concerned about the past. They want to, oh, who did you date in the past? What did you do in the past? Did you do this thing in the past? Did you do this and that? People want to know all already so they can try to size you up and jump up. But they don't understand that the past doesn't define you. What defines you is you. And so in order definition to be seen and heard, it requires you to express that which is. Not someone to define you. No one can define you. They can only define their own perception. And that might be big enough, strong enough or wide enough for to, to define you. You might be a supernova and they're trying to define a star cluster or something else. They're not defining you. You can define you. So step into definition of yourself. That is when you see cha uh, transformation happening on high dimension levels. You can communicate with your kids, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friends, your family, your community. It doesn't matter because now you understand that the, that the resource is not in what you buy or obtain. The resource is you. You are that resource, right? And so that resource becomes the proclamation of your divinity. Your divinity is seen in this resource here, not in the resource that's outside of you. These things outside of you are this there. You know, you can make. You can, put a, you can put a stone on the ground, a stick on the ground, and you can put a rope on the ground, and you decide what you want, right? And so you can say, hey, look, here you, are. you get a stone, you can either choose the stick or you can choose a rope. You can only take one. Which one are you going to take? You choose what one you're going to take based on the resource here. The resource here is going to cultivate you to choose the stick, the stone, or the rope. It's not because you're going to choose the stick, stone, or rope because you think the stick, stone, and rope is going to be the thing that actually gives you resource. You are the source. So if someone put a stick open me, I would choose, depending upon who I am and the nature of my being, what thing, what tool would work best, the resource and technology I am here now. You understand? But see, what the system wants you to do is forget that connection of resource here. They want you to see the resource there. So that way you feel empty and depleted and vacuous here. And you think that this thing is actually making you more spiritual. This thing is actually giving you more wisdom. This thing is actually giving you more strength. You are the strength. You are the wisdom. You are the resource that you grab is just to add to the resource that you already are because it just complements that resource. Complements. Enhances. But not is. Difference. A big deal, right? So, when I am sharing things with you, I'm teaching you about how to access earth memory or how to connect to your ancestry or how to draw symbols to access power hidden in the earth from the old world of Nigeria. I'm teaching you by not teaching you and saying you don't know. I am saying you already know this. I'm asking you to remember the resources here. Crystals, tarot cards, angel cards of Dorian virtue, this thing, that thing. These are not things that, that power. They enhance you. Not the resource. Never forget that. Because at the end of the day, I don't need this jacket. I don't need this shirt. I don't need any of the things in my house to survive. I can survive without this jacket, without things. If I had to be in my underwear and just with a stick, I'm going to choose what I need according to the resource that I am. You see? And that I'm, I'm going to be okay regardless where I'm at in the world, wherever I go in the world. You know, when I'm living in Israel and Turkey and Erdogan is, is, is doing strikes and crazy things and all this stuff and, and, and people tanks coming out, we got coups happening and people calling me from America going like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? They have, they, there's a coup now happening. How, you can't get out of Turkey. I said, who said I want to get out of Turkey? Why would I want to get out of Turkey? You think I want to abandon my brothers and sisters when they're going through this intense time right now? No, I'm going to stand and deliver. I'm resource. I'm stand and deliver. I don't need... What, like, what are you talking about? You see yourself as resource and you can be anywhere in the world and you will be fine. See yourself as a resource and you can be anywhere in the world and you will be fine. Anything can happen and you will be fine. Okay? You will. Trust me. And that's what a rooted person is. So when I talk about 
rooted consciousness, rooted awareness, rooted human beings. Now you understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about stop seeing the outside as a resource and see yourself as a resource and see those things as enhancements to the resource that you already are. That's going to help you to learn how to manifest things quicker because you're not seeing as someone giving you something. You're seeing as something that you're pulling in because you're already the resource. So you already know what you need in order to be the resource that you are. You understand? Every time you go into this depleted lack of something from the outside is paying something better, you are actually disconnecting yourself from the reality of true understanding, which is what we say in when we say uh, uh, that expanded awareness. Right. The out, the idea that something outside is actually finding you and refining you to be the that gives you the resource is the reason why there's lack limitation, uh, you know, uh, you know, poverty consciousness. I mean, the list goes on because we don't realize that we're a walking resource. When you see that you're a walking resource, abundance, prosperity, and anything you need will just come to you as you desire it because you being will just naturally pull it to you because it's what you need to resource that's because you are you are magnetic frequency, right? So you are operating in magnetic tones and elocutions and frequencies that are sending out certain patterns and frequencies to energy grids that are out there that are in the invisible plane, which I talk about in the shaman school, that allow you to pull things in magnetically. And fear does the same thing. Fear pulls things to you. Love pulls things to you. Knowingness pulls things to you. Resource pulls things to the resource, okay? Because I don't know, I don't know what 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 this what this codependency snot is on our planet. Everybody codependent, like Superman is going to come out of the sky and save you. You are Superman. Recognize you are Wonder Woman. Recognize you are Captain America. Recognize you are all the superheroes that you see in the movie. Okay, and don't get it. Don't get don't don't create this idea that it's it's them and you. You are which you which you are, and that's than anything everyone can end up put, put in a movie theater, that's for sure. You So learn, look around you and go, wait a second, why do I have all this stuff around me? Do I need all this stuff? This stuff doesn't define me. I'm giving It's not supporting or enhancing my resource. I have it. Like if I have a picture on the wall and the picture is, I don't wake up in the morning and see the picture and it's lit and I don't wake up and feel the picture and feel like I can be of service and I don't look at the picture and I feel like I'm, I, I can amplify love, the picture's coming down. It's coming down. Because it's not doing anything for me. Do you understand? It's not doing anything for me. If I have a coat in the closet, I haven't touched that coat in so much time, I'm going to give that coat to the person who needs a coat. That's not doing anything for me. Updating my resource. It's not enhanced by I already have. It's just stuff. And that's what the matrix you to just keep distracts and stuff. All right. So for today, for 30 Days Strong, we're going to about allies, okay? We talked about allies yesterday. We've been doing a lot of talk about understanding that. The reason why I wanted to show you this resource and this connection of resource is because even when we're connecting with spirit guides and, and animal spirits and, and all these different things in nature, these are allies. They're here to enhance our resource, not here to do it for us. Now, I'm explaining that to you because a lot of times I see people that new the new age community, like, oh, uh, and, you know, St. Germain and, uh, and, uh, and Kwan Yu. And, and like they put statues and on their home, Buddhas and all kinds of things, you know. Look, at the end of the day, if you don't got a statue of yourself, seriously wrong. If you don't have an altar with your own picture on it, understand what you're doing. One time I was in Turkey, I was going to people like Shaman Durek, we have a, a, an altar in our house with pictures and candles. I was like, oh, no, no, you don't. Take it, take it down. Take it down. I am not your guru. Don't ever disrespect me like that again. Don't ever put me up on a pedestal and disrespect me like that again. I will tolerate that from you and not from anyone because I want you to see yourself as the resource. And today, if you got an altar, and on an altar you got everyone else out there, but you ain't on that altar, what are you saying about yourself? What are you saying? Do you actually think you're going to have some kind of some understanding of actualization in this lifetime, and you can't even acknowledge yourself as the living presence of the divine in this embodiment right now? What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to other people? If you don't have a picture of yourself on your altar, I, I don't know. I got to ask you something. Are you a worshiper? And what are you worshiping? And like, 
I mean, like, you think that because you, you pray to Durga or Lakshmi or this person, that person, they're coming in, they're going to fix everything for you? They're like, oh, there she goes again. There he goes again. I'm here to enhance you, not to do it for you, okay? You know, I love you unconditionally, but I'm here to enhance you, not do it for you. Why do you keep calling me? You have the power. I'm here to enhance what you have. Let's go there. Not, oh, please help me. Uh, all this codependency. That's why we're in the mess we're in today. Because we think the government is doing it for us. And all of us people are sitting back. Do you know that true revolution only happens from the people? The people decide what goes in the world. If you look back in the 60s and 70s, the reason why the 60s and 70s was such a remarkable time, because when people got together and utilized themselves as resources, not by looking at their government and saying, okay, you're going to fix it. Because, you know, how many times does it take for a soldier to go to to the mother and hand the mother another flag and say your son has given his life for a stupid war created out of a bat and so just you know all the beautiful children you brought in are dead but here's a flag of you he's oh please get out of here with that nonsense people had enough they're like I have music i'm gonna write songs what's happening i i'm gonna speak i'm gonna use my resources to gather people together to bring one mind, one love, one thought, one idea, so that we can create a revolution. You think the people in this world are going to make changes for us that are for the better? You think our government has our best interests at heart? Are you kidding me? They have one interest, profit, power, and position. Profit and position. If you don't see that, then you need to check in with yourself and ask yourself, why did you get so codependent? Because you're too powerful to be thinking that way, my loves. You're too powerful to be thinking that way. You need to be thinking, okay, what are my resources? I got Instagram, that's a resource. I can do, I can, you know, I can, I mean, you can like, whatever. One time I was stranded on a beach and like, how am I going to make money? And Spirit goes, look at all your resources. Like, okay, let me see. I can tie a shoestring. I can do a massage. I can watch children. I can cook. Okay, those are resources. What else do I got? Okay, I can speak. I can enlighten people's minds. That's a good research. A resource, you know, it's, it, you got to look at all your resources. And, 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 stop, and stop acting like you don't have any, because you do. You'd be surprised. You do. All right. So we're going to talk about um, allies and animal spirits. Now, animal spirits are there to enhance us, okay? And today I wanted you to bring a piece of paper and a pencil because I want you to, to, to create east. So on, the, on your paper, put east, okay, on the top in front of you to this side, which is your right side. Notice when I'm on a media split. So when you see me doing that, it looks like pointing to my left, but I'm actually pointing to my right. Because people write me, they're like, "Are you? You did it in the wrong hand." I'm like, "No, in the right hand. It's just that you know, this is what it looks like on media. In front of you, south to the right of you, you're going to put. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, in, uh, to the right of you, south in front of you, east. <laughs> in the front of you, east. To the right of you, south. To the left of you, north. And to behind is. And you're going to make a circle. You're going to put a box in each of those areas. Okay? Now, after that, I want you to just sit in a comfortable place and imagine in the center of this wheel. In front of you is the east. Behind you is the west. To the right of you is the south. To the left of you is the north. Walk in the direction of the east, look up with your mind at the sky. And as you look up at the sky, what animal comes when you look up at the sky? What animal comes into your mind? Now, just see the first animal that comes to you. And the first one that you see that comes to you, okay, because it can be all the animals in nature, doesn't matter what it is. Just because you're looking at the sky, the sky is just the element of air down in that box for east. Good. Now, go over to the south. Turn and walk towards the fire. Stare at the flame of the fire. What animal do you see when you stare into the flames of the fire? What, what animal do you see in the fire? in the flames of that fire. What you see, write it down in the south. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Good. Now, 
go over to the north. When you look into, into the bushes and the trees, what animal do you see? Animal is in nature behind the trees. Animal is the first one you see. Down in the north. And then when you turn around and walk toward the ocean and you look at the waves and the foam of the waves and the waves in the water and you see the glistening of the water and look into the water, what animal do you see from the water? What do you see from the water? And write it down. Good. Now, now, whatever animal you saw, that is the animal you saw. Now what you're going to do, you're going to make a line on the piece of paper. At the bottom of that line, you are going to write earth, water, fire, and air. And next to it, you are going to write each animal from the beginning of the bottom going up. This is your totem. This is your totem. Good. The animal that or okay deals with your humanness, your human behavior. Okay, you're gonna find this. You can always go back and watch this on Apple TV and Roku at connect.tv. And I have to continue because I only have a certain amount of time to do this. Uh, I'm a busy man. Man. <laughs> I get the first one is the humanness, it's your foundation. That animal is there to teach you about the nature of of your being, the nature of your being, and the way in which you should operate for balance, foundation, and stability in the nature of your being. So that animal, okay, the ally is supporting your nature of your being, your foundation, the earth aspect of your being. Okay. Also, this animal also deals with how you bring things into your life. So, meaning you saw and solidify things. Your foundation, meaning your groundedness, your 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 rootedness, how it roots you. Okay, and who you are. Okay. Now I'm going to move along and then I'm going to come back and show you how to, to add each of those. Okay, next one, your, your water. The water is how you perceive feelings and how you connect community and how you operate in this, this, this energy frequencies of the universe. So it is connection, community, and feeling, and also for your uh, uh, sensuality and the way in which you connect into people's emotions and their feelings. This is how you broadcast energy into the world, okay? The water aspect represents the absorbing, how you pull things in and how you bring them out. This is the part that deals with community relationship, intimacy, very important, very important, right, now, also deals with healing, healing energy, okay, now, next one, going up, you have fire, which is the south. This deals with 
how you take action and how how you how you deal with movement and life and action okay how you 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 make things happen okay this is how you think this is your thinking aspect how you think how you 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 bring your mind to things okay this animal is governing that for you okay this is power is being acknowledged so some people might say well my animal doesn't seem so strong don't be judging your allies you don't their allies all have strengths in their ways that they have strength. and those are the strengths that you need so we and remember in shamanism we do not judge remember what i told you? my grandmother said when you judge you blind do not judge don't be blind you need your eyes open your ears open and your mouth ready to speak. Again, going into that element, the mind, the fire, the way you bring actionable thoughts into the world, the way you amplify into the world, okay? Very important, very important, okay? If, if, if you, you know, so don't, judge the animal based on what you think the animal is there's every animal has a, a power that enhances your power okay i'm not speaking to blindfold remember okay eyes open ears open mouth ready to speak now the next is, is air this is the place where you want spirit to connect with you this is what that animal governing this is your uh, psychic abilities your ability to manifest into the energetic planes okay into the invisible realm this is the animal that can open the doorway into that invisible realm okay this is the animal that helps you understand the unknown this is the animal that under helps you understand relationship to spirit this is the animal that helps connect communication in the right way okay You might have to go back and, and, and go through this because I have to move on because there's, there's, there's a lot of things to cover here, yes? Okay, now, you have your totems. It's like, why, Shaman Dirk? Why because of these things? Okay, these are very valuable, important things that shamanically make great sense that I'm going to share with you right now. All right. Every animal on totem has ability to look through your eyes by you downloading, by saying, I give you permission to look through my eyes at this, this, this. The things you want your animal to look are the things that are governing on your totem. So if it's earth, I want to look at my life, how I care for, for, for me, my, my, me as a whole. And what you're going to do to do that, you see the animal come look in your eyes and then you ask the animal as it's looking at the to tell you them for things that you have difficulty in that area and you remember okay to feel so when you do this exercise you're actually learning how to connect to nature and learn how to connect to animals to connect to feeling so feel what they are sharing with you feel in your emotions what they are sharing with you okay then you go to Water. What? What? How am I in my collective, my community, my sensuality, my ability to to feel? And you tell the animal to come through. Now, just as much as you have the animal through and look through your eyes, I also you to practice looking through the animal's eyes. And you can do that by taking breaths and close your eyes and say your your name of your your animal. Say. I want to merge with you and look through your eyes. Or I want you to merge with me and look through my eyes. Remember, it's a merging to enhance your power. They're here to supplement your power, to assist you in even enhancing and your power. You're already powerful, so you can imagine how much more powerful you're going to be. Allies, animal allies in shamanism is very important. Very important. 
Very important. There are certain elements in nature that has helped me with my relationships, helped me with my public speaking, helped me to be up in countries where I was there, where there's conflict and war. It has helped me. I didn't have my Jaguar with me when I was in Israel and the bombs are going off like every hour upon half an hour and jumping, going on a number four bus and that bus blow up and this thing, that thing. My Jaguar led me in through every situation. It weaved me through the city in the right way in Tel Aviv. When I was in, 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 um, in uh, Turkey and with the coup and everything, okay, my crow taught me how to see through the lies, through the things that were going on, to warn and give understanding to my friend or Turkish of what is going to happen. My friend called me on the phone at my place in Nishantashe and said, Ashaman Durg, what do you think is going to happen? How long is it going to last? I said, my crow's going to be gone tomorrow, done tomorrow, done. Don't worry. You don't have to get any food. Because the crow, the crow gave me the wisdom. Okay? Sometimes my animal will say, it's time for you to leave the country. you got to go now. So I, I leave. Boom. Done. You understand? Again, learning the wisdom of the allies Merging with them to see through them and merging and then merging with you so they can see your life and give you wisdom is a powerful shamanic skill. So if you need to watch this again, watch it again. You want to make something cool, create a piece of paper with all your animal totems on the piece of paper and, and, and practice every day connecting with one of your animal totems through drumming, singing, dancing, whatever, art. I don't care how you choose to do it. I have Wall Street execs connect. One, one of my uh, Wall Street exec colleagues was learning how to connect with his wolf and it helped him make a decision, not when he was doing with the analyst team, how to make a certain decision, how to deal with his team because this wolf taught him. So don't think just because you, you, you may like, oh, this is too spiritual. This is too new age for me. No, it's not. We are part of them. They are part of us. That's what we have to learn. That's why we're in the situation we're in because we did not realize the level of connection we have to Gaia. If Gaia is not gonna breathe because you're cutting down her trees, then she, we're not gonna breathe. If we're not um, supporting Gaia and, and giving and nurturing and planting seeds, then we're not planting seeds within ourselves for our future, for our children. Let's, let's realize the truth. Mm, I love you. I know how powerful you are. I see how powerful you are and let no one tell you otherwise. I assure you, by you not being codependent, you shall see all the reasons you've gone through every pain, every suffering you went through for the necessary knowledge for you to be the lit leader you are. Ah, lit kisses. If you like what you hear, check out my podcast, Ancient Wisdom Today. And amazing, get, the, get, get leveled up. Learn what you need to learn. Remember how powerful you are. No one stands in your way ever. It's always you. No one can take from you. It's always you. No one ever puts you down. It's only you. So make a decision how you decide to see yourself, know yourself, and love yourself, and be the leader that you are. You got this. You're, you're born for power. You're born for victory. Peace.